Hey guys, today I'm looking at V.S. Nepal's Gorillas. I read this book after reading, uh, where is it? Ooh, over here. Christoph Ransmeyer's The Last World, which, this was a good book, but it was a very dense and difficult read, and ultimately kind of a two-dimensional reading experience. So I wanted to go back to somebody who, for me, could wipe the slate clean. And Nepal is one of those writers for me. I'd read a House for Mr. Biswas, and uh, this book right here, A Bend in the River, which is one of my all-time favorite books. This book is so well done. The narrative is so tight, and the character's descent into treachery at the end is just amazing. So uh, this was a good, a good read, and I was hoping Gorillas would be uh, kind of similar because it was published a couple years after A Bend in the River, um, kind of during Nepal's middle period and it was only a dollar. So this book uh, it concerns an unnamed Caribbean island which you, you would think is modeled after Trinidad and the main character of this book, he's the main antagonist, uh, is a very fascinating character named James Ahmed aka Jimmy who's based on an actual real historical figure named Michael X who was the leader of the black movement in the 1960s in London, I guess sort of the Malcolm X in London. Uh, Michael X had some issues in Europe and ended up going back to Trinidad, which is where he was from, and he ended his life ended very tragically. I think he was executed. Um, but the character in this book, Jimmy, uh, similarly starts a commune in this island, and it's called Thrushcross Grange exists sort of on the border of civilization uh, and the bush, which is what Nepal refers to quite often in his work and in his life. Uh, the bush being sort of like the jungle or this primitive state of man, this Lord of the Flies state where there's no law and where what civilization always threatens to backslide into if you're not careful. So uh, in, Jimmy is the is, starts this commune and uh, employs like you know local black youth uh, and I guess it's sort of a Fourier type experiment this agricultural utopia it could be cover for something more sinister basically um, the other characters in this book uh, there's Peter Roche who is a South African who himself is sort of like a light terrorist uh, and ended up getting tortured in South Africa for some of his more violent demonstrations and he ended up in London uh, and wrote a book and came to this island under the employ of a corporation called Sablitches which I guess sort of represents the um, the white imperialist capitalist uh, uh, entity that overshadows this third world country uh, he naively says that he's there to do good which anybody who says something like that um, usually has other motives in mind, um, but he's sort of painted to be um, like an overseer over Jimmy's and his commune. Uh, Jimmy seems to look up to him and calls him Massa, and that's how it sort of is set at the very beginning. Uh, Roche is accompanied by Jane, who is his book publicist. She's this woman in her late 20s, and she is a very, I don't know, her, she's painted in a very um, misogynistic way. Uh, not not a very likable character. I think she's one of those women who just follows men around, you know, the most powerful one, just a string of men having secondhand thoughts and experiences. Uh, she has her own intuition, but, um, you know, pro not really much of a feminist. Um, and Nepal breathes enough life into that character, just enough to where later on when these characters suffer, it's just that much more real. Um, but yeah, this the plot is uh, essentially kind of like a, a chess match between these characters just to see who will gain power and who will prevail. And prevailing doesn't necessarily mean that, that you'll live in the end. But um, that's what I like about Nepal, like in the Bend in the River as well. Um, it's very tightly, tightly written. And the way the plot uh, goes is sort of like this narrow corridor that just gets more narrow and there's exits but you know they start getting closed off and there's maybe just one exit left at the very end it's just a sliver 
And, but by then, the characters don't care whether they live or die. They have this very fatalistic attitude uh, about their, their situations, especially the character Roche. Um, and as, the, as Jane and Roche's relationship starts to deteriorate, she gets more uh, interested in the Jimmy character. Nepal does something very interesting in, the, uh, in this book, the very beginning. There's these long italicized sections here, and you, you figure out that this is Jimmy himself writing, and the writing is just embedded into the narrative. Uh, but he's sort of keeping a journal or writing maybe a novel, uh, and, uh, but the viewpoint that he takes is not his own. He actually tries to inhabit the minds of other characters that he knows, uh, Jane for instance, after their first meeting, he inhabits her mind and she des he describes her describing himself uh, and adulating him. <laughs> it's a very, I don't know, solipsistic, egotistical move, but it's very insightful for a character to do this. Uh, and I kind of think about, you know, there's some books that where the, the author might actually put himself in the book as an actual character, like uh, J.M. Coetzee does this in Summertime. Haven't read this book, but you know, I'll eventually get around to it. I have to read um, Youth first. I read uh, Boyhood, which was good. Um, but he does this technique where J.M. Coetzee is a character in this book. And, you know, Martin Amos has done that, Ben Marcus has done that. Uh, but I find that to be less interesting. I guess the creativity quotient for me is almost like uh, cut in half because, you know, it's it would be definitely fascinating and easy to write about yourself as a character. But in this book, the character of Jimmy writing about himself, he's a fictional character writing fictions about himself through other people's viewpoint. And I found that to be an amazing, amazing insightful technique uh, for characterization. It's like double the creativity quotient for me. Paul is a stone cold killer in this book. Uh, he, he does remind me a lot of uh, J.M. Coetzee. They seem to share this sort of intensity and merciless, merciless, mercilessness uh, when they're creating their worlds. I mean, Coetzee might even be more hardcore than Nepal. Nepal gives you just enough breathing room for the, the blood to flow, and then he just cuts you, cuts you in half, uh, which I love. Um, yeah, this book, I th there's a couple, he, he does try to write directly about sex in this book. There's a couple sex scenes, and uh, I think it's a risk, especially even vaulted, vaunted writers uh, can win bad sex writing awards, and I think maybe Nepal t tries to preempt that by writing about bad sex in this book, which I like that approach, but uh, later on it just gets to be kind of explicit and I think unnecessarily explicit. That's really where a writer can, because there's only so much configurations and you're, you're partaking of a, a certain pool of language, the same pool that, you know, best-selling romance authors might use as well. And that's the one, one place where Nepal like, kind of lifts up his leg and shows his seam and exposes himself as being vulnerable as a writer. I guess this is sort of loosely based on historical events. So Nepal knows where the story's going, and uh, you know you hear a lot about writers who, when they compose, they do it more so in an improvisational way. Like they don't really know where the story's going, and they don't want to know. They just follow the rhythms of language and their own intuition, and so the story kind of just creates itself. Uh, but I think there's something to be said about writers who uh, who really plot things out and still can create compelling fictions as a result. I think this writer right here, Orhan Pamuk, says that that's how he operates and he creates extremely compelling narratives. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if that's really how Nepal operated for this novel right here, but he gives you that impression. So yeah, this book was thoroughly an enjoyable read and definitely wiped the slate clean for me and I'm looking forward to going back and checking out some of his other works. He's written a whole lot. In fact, I'm reading a biography. Well, I guess it's sort of, yeah, I guess it's sort of a biography about him, uh, which I might do a book review on later. Um, he's a fascinating character. 
uh, himself as a human being. A lot of a lot of interesting uh, things there as well. But as a writer, his fiction's just first rate, absolutely first rate.